Good afternoon, my name is Nick D for VIS, welcome to episode 3 of To Kill a God. Last time we left off, we conquered our first province, Darbata, and now we're going to conquer our second province, Bekrem. And so we're going to meet their force right here, the Battle of Luzur. Hopefully we get lucky and actually capture them. Uh, we didn't, but we're going to be sieging down this fort. I don't want to uh, subject you guys to watching that, so I'm going to make a pause. And we'll resume probably when they come back for round two, or we finish sieging the castle. Okay, this is actually a pretty interesting event. A stranger is brought before me. She has waited outside uh, the castle gates for a week, my, lo my liege. My guards inform me. The woman bows deeply. My name is Tanufli, your highness. I have traveled far and wide and seen many things, but I'm weary of the road. If you allowed me to stay, I'll happily share my knowledge of the world with you and be your loyal servant. And this is actually pretty cool, because I've never seen this religion before. Manat. Uh, is it a Wardenite faith? No, it's a Manat faith. Much of the modern Manat religious culture is built around prediction and interpretation of the sacred text of the gods, which is overseen by a large caste of translator priests. Although there is original translation passed down by oral tradition, many Manat translators attempt to decipher the original language of the gods themselves so that they might uh, better be able to form a society as it was in the holiest of early days. I've actually never seen this faith before. Let's see if we can find... Uh, their uh their holy sites and i think it's a faith yeah look at that it's a faith native over here so i i actually never seen it before i probably wasn't looking but we're gonna say we have no room for the likes of you and i won't pause because oh war in the west msar has just exploded uh Pejman has died and so all his sons are sort of uh fighting over the scraps of his great empire if you might have saw at the start it was a big purple empire, but now it's in a warlord period, much like Demoda is. But uh, we're in time, and I was going to say I wasn't going to pause, because these guys are about to come back, and we're about to destroy them. But the fall of Orispul. What initially seemed to be exaggerated tavern gossip, gossip of passing mercenaries and merchants has now been confirmed by a herald from the court of High King Senwar. Orispul has fallen. The, the great city had been undergoing a general decline with the ongoing disintegration of the empire. The symbolic power of the event is still undeniable. All across the shattered coast, the news has been met with utterly predictable horror by adversarians of all stripes. While their enemies have erupted into jubilant revelry, revelry, though no doubt an event of an enormous historical magnitude, however, we ultimately hold little stakes in that particular race. Interesting development. We That's just a way of saying we don't care. And the wise fool, my name is Kanano, my lord. I've come before you to offer my wisdom. He's an Azdarkai, so uh, we're going to get, please share your wisdom with me. And he only really confused us, because he, he is uh, an insightful thinker, but let's see, let's see what the modifier confused gives us. Oh, minus one learning. And prematurely, the child was not meant to be. She is no longer pregnant. Let's also see if we can demand conversion. And no. So we have a we have a Mogo white wife, but we'll we'll let it stand because we we just want a son really. So we we don't care. And we completed that war, so we're gonna move our rallying point here, and we're gonna get ready to gank these guys. Except they're allied to a very powerful neighbor of ours. Uh, Golka Ronoka of Gedali, so we're instead going to gank these guys down here. We're going to go with the Conquer County War. Unfortunately, we don't have enough prestige for that. So, um, if we weren't, if we weren't, uh, doing stewardship, I would have gone Marshal and gone Bellum Justum, which would have given us enough prestige to do that. But I think we're about to get pre some prestige, because these guys are about to rise up in 36 months. I, I don't know why. Uh, but let's host a feast that's 50 gold. Uh, and so let's, we're going to get some prestige from that. And it will also give us some time to replenish our levies. A cheery gathering, the guests are gathering in the, in the Great Hall, lords and ladies from the near and far reaches of the realm. The mood is bright and spirits are high as the feast begins. We are also very, very light-skinned. I just noticed that. But these guys to our south are a big obstacle. But the exposed affair, a loud crash resounds through the Great Halls, one of the doors to the service quarters break. In a barely clothed tumble, my vassal Zaluna Saman and my vassal Zaluna Kina spill out on the floor in front of everyone. Aw, oh, come on, guys. Not cool. That's my feast, and you're fucking in it. I'd be, I'd be pretty understandably pissed, but uh, the wine merchant should be in town. Oh, we're going to have to. <laughs> I'm going to spend 75 uh, prestige, but we should be getting it back. 
And let's go to four speed just so we get this feast over. Come on, guests, leave. And until next time, when we got 150 prestige. So now we're going to gank this guy. We're going to conquer county and raise up our levies and gank him right here. Hopefully we get lucky and actually uh, capture him. Uh, I'm here's, here's to hoping we capture him. I don't, I don't think he's leading in uh, at all. But sometimes you get really lucky that they're actually leading their force. So I'm going to do the same thing, also a Freeman's Fortune. Asmaron, a free tenant renting some of the land in Darbata, has pulled an exceptional harvest this season due to his meticulous planning. He wishes to use some of his profits to purchase a piece of my estate from me so that he can build upon his success and grow more crops next year. Uh, it's Darbata, we have 10 control, so we, m we might as well just get this. 50 gold is pretty good. And a vague uh, violation. A messenger arrives before me, clad in the livery of an incredibly minor landholder within my realm. He bows before me and presents me with a neatly folded envelope bearing a part partly melted wax seal. Opening the letter, I read an extensive legal argument by a said uh, minor landowner, blaming her immediate overlord for a number of rights violations, rooting her arguments in place at a punctuation within a generation's old contract. A copy of the contract in question was also attached in full, with a relevant passage in annotated. While the argument does have some legal merit, the contractual obligations are left vague, most likely by design, and as a result there's no nobody clear in the right, with the egregious violations of the landholder's rights being completely within a reasonable interpretation of the law. And uh, we're going to let our court magistrates weigh in because I'm not trying to tank 60 stress. And so we'll let our court magistrates that also doesn't seem like an issue. I'm also going to make a pause here and we'll resume if they come back to face us or when the siege is done. Okay, they're coming back for round two. We should be smashing them again. Uh, we should have probably, uh, because a lot of the armies we're going to be facing have light footmen, we should probably get rid of these heavy infantry. And we didn't get lucky, but we're at this fortress is about to fall. And we actually caught him. And look at that, they conquered us. So we're going to get our marshal. We're going to get him oh, right here. Also, we need a new steward. Uh, we probably will get a court marshal in time, but we're going to have him boost up the control in these counties. Their next target's going to be this guy, or we're, we should begin snaking towards Zahili. This guy, however, I think uh, if we get him before he raises up his levies, that would be good. By raise up his levies, I mean replenish. That's the word I was looking for. I think we should also, let's get a contingent of Manganel. Actually, let's get Onagers. It's cheaper, and we really need the gold. But it's good to get some uh, Siege Artillery, and we're going to get Taxman, just to get some more uh, finances. We're still going to worry about this guy. I, I think he has a, yeah. He doesn't have a claim on any of our counties, thankfully. But he probably does have the Conquer Costas Belly. And so I think before this guy fully replenishes, we're going to conquer county. Ooh, we, do, we don't have enough prestige, and I do not want to risk uh, doing a holy war, which will call in the rest of these guys, probably. The gang ganked like that would not be a good idea. But we got to jump in on this guy, because once we capture Zahili, uh, you guys saw, I think, in the first episode where I showed the decision. Let me find it. Uh, we can loot the big temple in Zahili. <laughs> that sounds like the big building in New Berlin. Uh... Tino copy pasta. Well, let's gank this guy right here. We're I still conquering county. Could we form a duchy? We don't have the gold, but we definitely have the counties for this. So um, maybe we could get lucky and get a random event. We can't raise raiders, so I think we sh we could probably take the risk and attack via holy war. Uh, so let's do a holy war for the county. Raise it up and let's gank it. You can hear the music swelling. And I feel like we're going to get lucky and my court chaplain's been injured. Not my problem. And look at that. I got really lucky. Uh, that's going to give us the prestige. And I think actually nearly enough prestige. And just some more levies. And look at that. We're, it spells an N. That's pretty funny. It's like an N across the map. For Nick. Nick D4VIS. Uh, anyway, for the rest of the episode, let's see. Our uh, We still don't have a core magi. 23 months left until we can convert this. And let's look at our religion again right before the episode ends. And we will end with that. We have Warmonger, Warden Knight, Legalism, and uh, Literalism. 
I the reason I was checking this is because I thought it was a uh, not citizen uh, citizenship through service, which is a really really good tenet because it basically allows you to ignore uh, like the culture you're conquering. But anyway, I'm Nick D4VIS. I'll see you guys next time.